Hi everyone, my name is Israel Barakini and I'm uh, glad to be presenting one of my research, uh, dissertation research uh, to you this uh, today. I'm a PhD candidate in the University of Nevada, Reno, in, in the graduate program on ecology, evolution, and conservation biology. This, uh, today, I'll be talking about quantifying the relationship between the soil seed bank and plant community assemblage in sites occupied by the threatened Ivesia weberi. The soil seed bank is a natural repository of viable seeds and vegetable, uh, vegetative structures for future generation, and it's been a very important part of uh, ecological studies since uh, it was recorded that Charles Darwin did a lot of studies on seedling emergence in his uh, backyard in 1859, uh, which was published in one of his papers. And soil seed bank is really important because it's the source of seeds for regeneration, uh, which helps in ensuring the persistence of, an, of a vegetative community, helps in maintaining the genetic diversity and the community structure of a particular site, and it helps in ensuring vegetative recovery even after disturbance. And of course, we know that uh, the, uh, of a large percentage of the terrestrial ecosystems in the world have been affected by Disturb one disturbance or the other. And so, and, and currently, now we know that uh, a lot of researchers and conservation scientists are highlighting the importance of restoration in ensuring that biodiversity is conserved, especially in areas that have experienced disturbance. And Consequently, the Saucy Bank is really, really important in ensuring this post-disturbance recovery and also helps in uh, ensuring that the ecological resistance or the resilience of the ecosystem is maintained. And so that is one of the reasons why it is important to study the Saucy Bank to be able to estimate uh, the ecological resistance or the resilience of an ecosystem such that we know we can predict what is likely going to happen post disturbance. So in a hypothetical environment, uh, a native co plant community undergoes disturbance, which could be fire or OHV vehicles or other forms of human involved uh, activities or invasive species and post disturbance, the native the, the uh, affected site could come back to its native plant community as it was before, or it could be changed into an alien plant community. So these are some of the things that uh, why we study the soil seed bank. And of course, the Great Basin Desert, as has been noticed, is the third um, ecosystem in the United States that is the third most threatened ecosystem in the United States as a result of a huge amount of disturbance and invasion by uh, non-alien plants in the environment. And so it is really not just important to study the soil bank anywhere, but particularly in the Great Basin Desert that has been affected or impacted by uh, disturbance, historical and current disturbance. But it's interesting to note that when we're talking about the soil seed bank, we're talking about seeds that have been shed by plants, a standing vegetation or standing flora on the ground. But many of the plants in the Great Basin Desert, native shrubs and even some herbs in the native in the Great Basin Desert, they regenerate vegetatively, um, and some of them produce very few seeds. And those that produce seeds, they don't have a very high dispersal capacity for their seed, and they also maintain a transient seed bank. And this may particularly be true for edaphic uh, endemics or chasmophyta, which are plants that grow on rocks. As a result of that, uh, you might wonder whether the soil seed bank really play a, an important role in vegetative recovery post disturbance in the Great Basin Desert. And that is why uh, it's really important to do this study to find out what really happens or what could likely happen post-disturbance. 
especially with the consideration that some plants actually regenerate through vegetative structures. And so if perhaps they survive post-disturbance, this uh, uh, disturbance, for example, fire, if they survive it, the surviving vegetative structures could contribute to floristic regeneration. Or we could uh, go into seeding, which is something that is very, very important and frequently used uh, management option in the Great Basin Desert currently. And sites that are selected for these studies were specifically selected to reflect the areas where these threatened plant species, Ivisa webera, uh, occupies. This plant is federally listed in 2014 as, an, as a threatened species in the Endangered Species Act. As of 2014, we only know of 16 locations of this species, uh, but a few others have been discovered recently and counting. And this species is found in the rose family, and it's found within uh, elevation of uh, 1364 meters to 1900 meters. And it regenerates mostly from the root codex, but field observations have shown that this plant also regenerates from seeds. At least it produces flowers, and the flowers produces seeds which are which are seeds from the plant. And um, with some studies are of some field observations have shown that we've uh, reported this uh, some age class differences uh, of some of the individuals found in some of these locations. So there are there are signs or evidences to show that this plant perhaps generates also from seed. And it's a form and it completes its entire phenological stage within six months. It's um, it goes into dormancy around middle August or around mid-summer and goes and remains dormant and dried on the ground until between the end of winter or early spring, it sprouts from either seeds or from the vegetative structures. And within a month or two, it starts to produce flowers, the seeds, and then it dies out again, all within a couple of months. And many of these sites where this plant is found have undergone wildfires, historical and current grazing, um, hiking, a lot of hiking trails and OHV trails, off-highway vehicle trails have gone through some of the sites, in, and particularly including the very popular historical California trail passes through one of the sites where this species is found. And at the same time, many of the sites have been heavily or uh, severely impacted by invasive species, particularly Bromus pectoralis, which is cheatgrass, and Medusa air. So we interested in knowing how these past and current land use practices affect the resilience of these sites. Perhaps um, if there's any um, disturbance that, is, that will occur in these sites, what is, what is going to be the trajectory of the likelihood of vegetative recovery, particularly of the native plant in these sites. And of course, we can all relate to this as we have wildfires going on in California right now, and it's affecting not just the trees or the forest, but also some really important endemic or rare plants in, uh, in those sites. So we are really interested in knowing what are this, is there any similarity in the floristic assemblage between the soil seed bank and the above ground vegetation? And is there a significant relationship in the floristic composition and diversity between the soil seed bank and the above ground vegetation? And what is the proportion of the above ground com plant community structure is explained by the soil seed bank? So to start with, we had to collect uh, the soil seed bank in 10 different sites that are, were accessible. They were collected within a one meter quadrant, uh, three different, uh, they were collected within the three centimeters of the top soil, which contains the highest dense density of seed. And these sites were, collect were, were selected randomly, but were selected within the patches where Ibiza webera occurs in each of those sites. 
The sampling was done between October and November after the seeds have been shed into the soil, and but before snow starts to bury them under the snow. And post collection, we see the, the soil samples to remove stones, and we estimated the uh, the amount of seeds or the um, uh, the seedlings in the soil. Uh, in the soil seed bank by the process of seedling emergence. I know there are some other people use different other methods that have been explained or described in literature, but we chose to use the seedling emergence because it helps to quantify the amount of active or, or uh, active or, or living seeds, not the dead seeds. And also some of the plants in this size, they produce very tiny seeds and if we choose to extract them, we could lose them uh, because of their very small size. And for the soil seed bank quantify, quantification, we use the process or uh, method of cost stratification in the greenhouse. As you can see from uh, the picture, also uh, the treatment we use, we try to introduce to break the dormancy in this seeds, include daily watering, a dry phase, another daily watering, application of gibberellic acids and some other different methods to try to break the dormancy. And then, um, in, uh, we, then we visited this site the following spring uh, to uh, do a field survey to find out what are the plants that are there in the standing vegetation because we're trying to compare between the source bank and the standing vegetation. So what, so we decided to uh, do a field survey to using the same methods of random sampling within one quadrant, uh, using one, one meter square uh, quadrant, and we took count of the seeds, the number of uh, the, and the number of species. We identified the species, we counted them, we estimated the percentage cover within each quadrant and in, within each site, and the distance to major or minor road, and as well as uh, um, uh, evaluating the level of distance or the intensity of disturbance within each uh, site. In addition to that, we also collected several other variables um, in, from geospatial analysis on the soil mean clay, the mean temperature in winter, temper in winter and spring seasons as well as solar radiation. We actually collected about 17 variables to use, but doing some uh, pre-analysis like correlations and some other analysis, we were able to reduce the number of variables to six. And for the data analysis, for the particular first question of trying to find out the similarity between the species assemblage in the soil seed bank and the above ground vegetation, we use the similarity index. And for the second question of finding if there's any relationship between the standing vegetation and the soil seed bank, we used redundancy analysis and permutation test. And for the last question of, the, of trying to uh, find out what proportion of the community structure is explained by the soil seed bank, we used relation partitioning analysis. So to the results, we discovered or we observed and recorded 82 species from the field surveys in which included 17 native uh, species and 12 alien species, including those that are listed there. Uh, on the far left is Balsamoriza ukeri, uh, followed by Lomatium microcarpum and Avisa weberi and Juncos bufonius. Um, interestingly, even though we had most uh, a higher species richness for native species. Alien, uh, the alien species contributed 73% of the total species abundance, even though they were a smaller number, but they had a larger abundance. And across the 10 different populations, which were numbered according to the number are designated given to them by the United States Fish uh, and Wildlife Service, the one that has the highest species diversity was the one in what was called the Population 5, which is located in Dog Valley Meadows in Sierra County, California. 
as far as the source seed bank concerned, we found with this, uh, we recorded 32 species uh, from the germination, including 20 native plants, uh, seven alien species, and five other species that could not be identified as at the time uh, uh, that the experiment ended. And that includes some of these species that are listed here, which I will move forward because of time. Um, these are uh, some of the native plants that are found in the soil seed bank. Interestingly, here in the soil seed bank, the alien plants contributed 91% of the total species abundance. And interestingly, compared to the, the uh, standing vegetation, the population unit five, which is at the Dog Valley Meadows, still maintain a, the highest species diversity across the 10 sites where the sampling was done. So to our question, is there any similarity between the soil seed bank and the above ground vegetation? We found only 37% similarity. And of this, uh, because there were only 21 out of 82 species in the standing vegetation that was recorded from the soil seed bank. And the soil seed bank was dominated primarily by the, uh, by the annual alien and non-native plant species. The above ground was dominated mostly by the native plants, but the species diversity was generally higher in the above ground vegetation. But regardless of all of these, the, the alien plants were abundance was so high across board in both the saucy bank and the above ground vegetation. For the second question, we asked whether there's any significant relationship between these two um, Part components of the ecosystem and in relation to or several other environmental variables, which included uh, solar radiation, the soil mean clay, winter temperature, spring temperature, vegetation cover, and other uh, factors that were brought in. And the redundancy analysis showed us that uh, looking at the left side of the of the biplot to see the winter temperature, which is associated with some of the units there. Uh, the it shows that sites that have warmer winters, they were associated with higher or greater vegetation cover. And at the same time, they were associated with higher abundance of Bromos tectorum, which is uh, designated as the BRTE on the biplot, which is cheat grass. And also, uh, looking down towards um, the lower uh, left of the of axis one, you will see the seed bank diversity was was mentioned was noted there uh, with unit five. We will see that. Uh, even from the results and this RDA plot, it shows that site, this particular unit five has the lowest number of, of abundance and richness of invasive species. So it has a lot of native species were recorded in both the seed bank and in the uh, standing vegetation. And so interestingly, we found that this particular site that had a very low abundance of invasive weed also add a greater species diversity, both in the source bank and in the standing vegetation. And therefore, we could conveniently say that species diversity in the source bank contributed significantly to above ground com uh, community structure, particularly from the invasive species standpoint. The last question to find out what proportion of the plant community structure is explained by the soil seed bank. But here, we did not just use soil seed bank alone as the only variable. We grouped the uh, climatic variables together as one group. The site variables, which include the mean clay, the, the soil, and the vegetative cover into one group and then the seed bank diversity and richness into under one group. And then we brought in spatial autocorrelation, spatial variable as another one group. So we have four different groups of variables that goes into this variation partitioning analysis. And the plant, the, 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 the 
abundance of species in the above ground vegetation is the, was the response variable. And we found out that uh, this uh, analysis or this model explains 61% of the variation in the plant community structure with only uh, uh, 0 0.39 uh, uh, residuals remaining that are not explained. And of this 61%, uh, a large, uh, the largest percentage was explained by the climatic variables, which is not surprising, but followed by the soil seed bank properties, which is the soil seed bank diversity and richness. And interestingly, even looking across sites, the site explained about 15%, spatial variables explained about 11%, but you can even see that the climatic variable synergistic effect with the soil seed bank also explain additional 11.35% of the variation in the plant community structure. What do these results mean? First, the, we found that uh, the similarity in the species assemblage between the above ground vegetation and the soil seed bank is driven by mostly by invasive alien plants. There is higher density of invasive alien plants in the soil seed bank and also even in the above ground vegetation. And the only site that did not have, that have a very low invasion are the greatest native species diversity. And it, it's so interesting because we found out that uh, many of the native plants produce very fewer seeds, which could have contributed to why we have fewer number of native plants in the soil seed bank because they produce fewer seeds and that in itself produces a biologically a lesser uh, sampling sources compared to invasive species. And not only that, uh, bearing in mind of the fact that uh, many native plants also regenerate uh, vegetatively could have also contributed to why we didn't have a lot of uh, um, native plants in recorded from the soil seed bank. And at the same time, one very important observation from the soil seed bank experiment that we did was that there are many other seeds that may have germinated, but we were unable to identify them before they died out. Some of them died out within one week of germination before they grow to the point where we could identify them uh, very um, accurately. And it, it doesn't really affect the result. It's actually a true reflection of what happens in the field because uh, several studies have shown that many native plants in the Great Basin Desert, they undergo a very high level of seedling mortality. And that's one of the reasons why even some seeding projects that have been done across the Great Basin Desert may have had some issues because of the seedling mortality. But of course, these results and field observation both uh, are congruent in the fact that cold stratification that characterizes the transition between the winter to spring uh, facilitate the regeneration uh, from the soil seed bank, particularly for many of the spring annuals and perennials. What does this mean from the restoration or management implications? It shows that uh, for these sites where uh, samples were collected, it shows that um, any post disturbance, it's the likelihood that there's high chances that post disturbance regeneration it will be dominated by early gra alien grasses, at least at the early succession, will be dominated by alien grasses. And because of that, uh, why is because the lower perspective, and because of that, there's low perspective of passive restoration because there are fewer seeds of native plants in the soil seed bank and many of them also undergo seedling, uh, higher seedling mortality and particularly even in competition, seedling competition with uh, uh, alien grasses. What does that mean is that uh, effective conservation action in this site need to include uh, seed banking to collect as many seeds of this native flora as possible for use in post disturbance regeneration. Uh, we shouldn't expect or put too much reliance on passive restor uh, restoration of passive vegetative recovery 
for this site, but we actually need to do more intensify post disturbance seeding with native plant flora, which is where we need to do more of seed banking uh, to be able to have enough ecological legacy that could be maintained for the site. And also, it's really important to intensify efforts on research and management efforts on invasive grasses um, control. That will be it, and I want to acknowledge uh, uh, different organizations and institutions that have supported my research. This is one of my several uh, dissertation chapters, and I really acknowledge the work and the support that I received in ensuring the success of these studies. Thank you very much.